Here's a flash revision guide on microscopes, including the differences between light and electron microscopes, calculations involving magnification, and the required practical on how to set up a microscope. Let's get into it. Microscopes are tools that allow us to view objects too small for the naked eye. As technology has advanced over the years, the quality of microscopes have improved, which has allowed us to see things even tinier and in greater detail. There are two main types of microscopes. Light microscopes, which were developed in the 17th century, and electron microscopes, which were developed in the 1930s. Both of these are very different to each other. Light microscopes use a beam of light to create an image, whereas electron microscopes use a beam of electrons. Light microscopes are generally much smaller and cheaper than electron microscopes, which is why they're used in schools, and electron microscopes are much more complicated and can only really be used by scientists. In terms of actually looking at objects, electron microscopes are much better than light microscopes. They have a higher magnification, which is basically the ratio of image size to the actual size of the object. The bigger the magnification, the larger the object appears compared to its actual size. So for example, if your microscope had a magnification of times 100, it would mean that the image of the object that you see appears to be 100 times bigger than its actual size in real life. The other improvement that an electron microscope has is a larger resolution or resolving power. This is defined as the ability to distinguish between two points on the image, which you can basically think of as the quality or sharpness of the image. So the image formed from a light microscope will appear more blurry than that of an electron microscope. So because electron microscopes have a greater magnification and resolution, when they were created in the 1930s, our understanding of cells improved greatly. We were able to use them to study cells in much finer detail. Using light microscopes only allowed us to see the basic outline of the cells and their nuclei. But when we started using electron microscopes to view cells, we could zoom into them with a higher magnification and see them in much more detail with a higher resolution. This allowed us to see and study the subcellular structures in cells, such as mitochondria and ribosomes, which increased our understanding of them. So when it comes to magnification, you can carry out different calculations using the equation magnification is equal to the size of the image over the size of the real object. The size of the image is the size that the object appears to be when you look at it through the microscope, whereas the size of the real object is the size the object actually is in real life. And when using this equation, you need to make sure that the units of the image size and object size are the same. In most questions, these are in millimeters or micrometers. If you need to convert from millimeters to micrometers, you need to multiply by 1000, but the other way around, you need to divide by 1000. So now let's look at an example where we have a plant cell with a length of 30 micrometers, and when it's drawn on a diagram, the length of it is 150 millimeters. Calculate the magnification of the diagram. So the first thing to do is to write down the information that we have, which is an image size of 150 millimeters and an actual size of 30 micrometers. We want to work out the magnification, so we use the equation we just learnt, which is image size over actual size. Now before we put any numbers into the equation, we need to check whether there are any conversions of units that we need to do. The units for image size and actual size need to always be the same, so we need to convert one of them. So let's say we'll convert the millimetres to micrometres. So you times 150 millimetres by 1000 to give you 150,000 micrometres. And now we can sub it into our equation as 150,000 over 30. And that gives us a final answer of a magnification of 5,000 times. So now let's look at the practical that you're expected to know for this topic. Light microscopes are the ones that you'll be working with in school as they're much smaller and easier to use. They have a light source or mirror, which acts as a light source, to illuminate the specimen that you're looking at. Above that is the stage where you put the slide down and clip it in place. You then have an arm which holds the rest of the microscope, including the coarse adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob, which are just used to focus the image of the specimen. Below the two knobs, you have the objective lenses. There are usually three of these and each have a different magnification power so you can cycle through them and pick the right magnification. 
above the knobs you have the eyepiece lens which is the one that you look through and this has a fixed magnification. So let's look at the stages that you need to take to use a light microscope to observe a biological specimen. For example, an onion cell. The first thing you need to do is add your specimen to a microscope slide, which is basically a strip of clear glass or plastic. You can prepare the slide by adding a drop of water to the middle of it. You can then cut up the onion and separate it into layers by using tweezers. You can then peel off the epidermal tissue from it, which is basically the bottom of one of these layers. Using the tweezers, you can then place the epidermal tissue into the drop of water on the slide. The next step is to add a drop of iodine solution onto the specimen. This solution acts as a stain, which makes it easier to view the cells because it adds color to them. Finally, you can place a cover slip onto the slide, which is a square piece of plastic or glass. You need to carefully tilt and lower it down so there are no air bubbles in it. Now your slide is ready to be viewed in the microscope. Your first step in doing this is clipping the slide onto the stage of the microscope. Then select the objective lens with the lowest magnification power. Now you can use the coarse adjustment knob which moves the stage up and down. So by looking down in the eyepiece, move the stage until it's roughly in focus. Then to get an even better focus, you can use the fine adjustment knob. You can turn the knob until you get a clear image of the cells. If you want a view with a higher magnification, you can just switch the objective lens with a higher magnification power and repeat the whole process of focusing. You can now use what you observe in the microscope to draw a diagram of the cells and include a scale that shows you the magnification of the diagram. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.